Hello, faculty members. This is Kevin DeLeon, uh, your Cengage representative. And I wanted to make a couple of videos for you to help you through the process in the beginning of the semester of using MindTap. Um, most of you are already using it inside of Blackboard, but I wanted to make a video first of um, how to get uh, MindTap inside Blackboard if you've never used it before. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm inside my MindTap, I'm sorry, my Blackboard, which looks a little different from yours because it's a demo account. But um, the same principles apply. On the left hand side here you have a bunch of folders. Now some of you are going to have more or less, but you're going to have some folders here. We need to pick a place that we're going to put MindTap. Um, it can be in your course content um, inform um, folder. Maybe you have a learning modules folder or an assignments folder. Uh, many of you have created actual MindTap folders here on the left um, for you. And the way to do that is to come up here to this plus and select content area. I call it MindTap. We're going to make it available to users because we want our students to be able to go there. And here it is down here at the bottom. So the first thing that we're going to do is go into that folder. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a folder specifically for you and your MindTap link. And so you're going to come up here to build content. You're going to go to content folder. And you're going to name the folder, I like to call it My MindTap uh, because it's just easy. Now the most important thing, whether you make a folder or you just bring in a MindTap link, um, you want to hide it from students. We want to hide the area that your MindTap link is in, whether it's a folder, a link inside of a folder, or just the link itself. You want to make sure that you hide it. So we're going to do that. We're going to say Submit. And now it's here and it's not available for students. Next, we're going to go into the folder and we're going to actually bring MindTap over for you. So um, up at the top here, I have a tab called Publisher Content. Yours is probably called Partner Content. Um, and down here at the bottom where it says Cengage Learning Mind Links, yours is probably going to say Commercial Content or Partner Content or something like that. But go ahead and click on it. Now, mine is actually already linked to my content because I use this computer all the time. Uh, but yours is not. You're, you are going to get a picture of um, a bunch of different um, publisher logos. Um, so what you're going to do at the very top is you're going to click the Cengage Learning um, logo. And then um, if you scroll down a little, you'll be able to see an actual MindTap logo. And you're going to want to click that. Um, and once you click it, you're going to be prompted for a username and password. This is designed for you to access MindTap via single sign-on. In other words, we're going to sign on one time, and then whenever we access MindTap through Blackboard, we'll never have to do it again. Um, I've already done it here, so it won't show on my desktop. Um, but the username and password you're going to use is um, your school email address is your username. And then the password is going to be whatever you've set your Cengage instructor account up. Um, as a password or if I've made a password for you. If you don't know what the password is, you can email me and I will either give you your password or reset it for you. Um, it's not a big deal. But once you go ahead and put that username and password in, you're going to come here to this content um, source selector. Now my uh, content selector here has all the books that we have inside of MindTap. Yours is only going to show a short list of what um, MindTap um, um, mind taps are deployed to your Blackboard server. Uh, so it's going to be a much um, smaller list. Um, but in this case, I'm going to choose a history book. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and select it. And you can say these say link to course because I have a couple of other demos running. So I'm going to choose this volume two Spielvogel Western Civilization. And at this point, this is exactly what you'll be looking at as well. Um, you're going to choose your book. Which book do I want to create a MindTap course for should be the answer to whatever choice you make. And while this is loading, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is um, we're actually going to create a course. Um, and you'll want to uh, bring over um, a MindTap link um, for each section that you're doing. However, once you establish your single sign-on, uh, you won't have to go through that beginning process um, that you just did. Okay, so um, here it is. And we're going to go ahead and create a course. 
Now again, this is for if you've never used MindTap before. If you've used MindTap in a previous semester, you can copy from an existing course and it will show a list of courses that you've already um, done in past semesters. Or if you have the course key for another instructor's MindTap course from last semester, maybe you liked how they really customized it, you could put that course key in here. But for these purposes, I'm going to put this in here. And we'll call it um, HIST 100 um, Demo. Okay, that's what I'm going to call it. Now, if you're doing multiple sections, MindTap is going to want a different course name for every section. So I suggest then putting your section number, maybe dash uh, 100, 100. Okay. The course start date is very important that you start the class on the, you start your class on the first day of class. The reason being is MindTap comes with a built in three week grace period. And that grace period begins on your class start date. And it will give students three weeks to access MindTap. Uh, for free, and it's designed for students that are waiting for financial aid or waiting for a paycheck or really seeing if they're going to drop the class or not. So whether your students come to class with a book or not, they'll be able to access MindTap through your Blackboard course um, for free on the first day, so it's important. So we're going to choose today the 15th, and then I like to push it out kind of far, maybe till June, um, just so that if I have any incompletes, I can go back into the course. And then lastly, you want to select your time zone. Ours for East is here. It's kind of towards the bottom. And then I want to continue. Now, once this is complete, uh, we've established the MindTap link for you. So whenever you want to go inside of MindTap and look at grades or make any customizations or really do anything inside of MindTap, this is the link that you're going to go to. It's going to be either... Um, you can hide just this link, or like I did, I made a folder, uh, and I hid the folder, and I put this link inside of it. Now again, for each section that you're teaching, you'll want to go into each section and go to um, Partner Content and go to Commercial Content and select the book, and then you'll want to create a course just like I've done. Now if you've used MindTap before, um, and you want to use it again, um, I've included on this, um, on this um, course page that I'm setting up for you instructions um, how to um, course copy in Blackboard so that you bring in all those extra um, student links that you did last semester. And all you need to do is go to your, um, your link that you made in your hidden folder and click on it, and you'll be again prompted to create a course. Uh, for yourself. So for those of you that have already course copied, you just need to create a course, go into your section, your new section, and click on your MindTap link, and it'll prompt you to create another course, or in most of your cases, copy from a course from last semester, so that you can keep your customizations. And then um, make sure all the links uh, for the students in each chapter or each module are live, and you're ready to go. It's that simple. Um, thank you very much, and um,